Running your own business can be lonely, finding reliable professionals difficult, and generating new business challenging, but not when you have a business network. New Gen Networking provides its members with new and exciting business opportunities, with the chance to build lasting relationships with vetted businesses who can act as your sales team and solve the issue of who to turn to in your hour of need. With a range of flexible and affordable solutions, New Gen apply tried and tested principles in a modern way to suit today's world. To find the right option for your business, visit newgen-networking.com or call 033336680. New Gen Networking, new business, new contacts, a new generation of networking. to the New Gen Podcast exclusively on the Pod Station. Here is an interview with one of our members from the Da Vinci Hub. Today we have one of our newest members to New Gen. We have Susie Cooper from Sales Accelerator. So can we have our hands together please for Susie? Hello, how are you doing? Hello, good, thank Very you. good, good. Right, before we get into the uh, business questions, I've got a question of, I want you to explain where your accent comes from. My accent comes from South Africa. I grew up in South Africa, okay. Cape Town. Right, so you're born there and... No, I was born in a place called Swaziland, which is right. on the border of South Africa, and then I moved to South Africa when I was 14. Right. Very good. And when did you come over to... Mm, when I was 22, right. so okay. that's 30 something years ago. No, surely not. <laughs> right, so, um, do you have a little background on your sort of career be- leading up to setting up your own business, what you've, uh, what you've sort of done? John, I fell into everything. Um, I fell into the world of sales when I was 17 years old um, because I wanted to leave home. Um, I went and got myself a sales job, which was commission based only. I walked around the streets of Cape Town with a briefcase full of gold jewellery and um, turns out that I I was quite good at it so I just continued on doing sales. What sort of companies have you worked for or Um, over here? All sorts, um, but mostly blue chip, uh, B2B, mostly just field based um, sales positions, working in London um, and in South Africa as a field based sales rep. And what what particularly led you to setting up your own business any major reason well again I fell into that but I think the biggest factor was the fact that I had uh, twins right and um, I didn't want to go back to work I didn't want to leave my babies right so I wanted to start on my own but that at the same time coupled with uh, my sales director doing my CPD review and saying you know what will we do with you what training do you need and he said, you don't need sales training, Susie, but in my opinion, you could do with something different, like possibly some personal development. Because even though you're smashing your targets and you're yeah. doing really well, you're pretty shit at organization. <laughs> uh, you're always late, you're always stressed. Why don't you go and do some personal development? And I stumbled into this world in 2005 where uh, I just fell in love with it and decided this is what I've got to build my business around. And now you're always on time, I take it? I'm not always on time, (laughs) but I do take ownership, which was one of the main things that that hit me in the face at that training. So so what's from the sales side of things, what does he actually offer clients? What do you, on the sort of sales training, are you working with small businesses, big businesses or? All sorts, so I work with individuals, uh, small teams, mainly small teams. I won't work with more than 10 people Mm -hmm. in one go because the connection thing is difficult um, so yeah basically small teams individual people um, and uh, a lot of people get confused and think it's actually teaching people how to sell it's got nothing to do with that it's helping people um, to develop a new way of it, it basically that adapts because the whole sales climate has changed yeah. thanks to the internet yeah. and so um, it's it's all about how, how people are their self-awareness their confidence, how they relate to people, 
uh, relationships, communication, that side of things, soft skills. Did, did you, have you found it's changed more recently th- th- since the pandemic? And is it just of that that's led to? Because I'm sure I'd imagine you, you've gone a couple of years without uh, being able to go and visit people and work with companies. So. It, it actually turned out really, really well for me because w- with COVID, I was taking a kind of a turn in, in you know, sh- what I was shaping. So. Um, yeah, it's been amazing because, you know, some of my clients in Northern Ireland, for example. Yeah. But I think one of the biggest changes is that I am not just working with salespeople. Um, I've landed up working with, um, you know, advisory teams, processing teams, and that's what's emerging. And that's right. why I'm kind of taking a bit of a direction turn uh, in terms of helping people with teams and accountability, first and foremost. So what? How how could we specifically people today today and anyway, how can we help you? What sort of it's an ideal referral or where do you sort of how can we support what you're doing? Well, I think that an ideal referral for me really is just people who um, have businesses, but in a nutshell, they've actually got everything in place. They've already got the right people. Um, they've trained the people. They've recruited, spent a lot of money recruiting those people. Um, but they still having you know ups and downs with uh, sales results, yo-yo sales results, um, and lots and lots of drama with people taking responsibility and accountability. Um, so yeah, small businesses um, who have teams um, who you know are yeah. customer facing as well. Okay. Yeah. So. And uh, have you got any courses coming up that you need to know about? Um, I've actually got an event on the 23rd of, what's next month? Oh, June. It's going to be June, the 23rd of June. Um, And it's a seminar that I'm running um, where I'm inviting CEOs um, and anybody who kind of, you know, works uh, connected with employers. Um, And, yeah, just to to introduce this simple uh, framework for helping get people to be more accountable so that's on the 27th of june and that, that's tickets people it, can buy tickets people can buy tickets if they're going to be on sale on eventbrite right. um and it's going to be at the golf course ellesmere port golf course and people can play golf afterwards do we have any questions from anyone here i'm sure there's quite a few things that people would like to ask you talked about staff taking accountability and stuff like that is there any tips you'd give employers that you can do just basically to to give them that accountability and to help them until they can come to you and then when things get severe so just any general tips to help improve your staff's accountability yeah i think like um people just need to be more honest and more open and, and just tell the truth you know in terms of you know what the requirements are you know what people are employed to do job wise etc i think everybody's kind of so scared just to be honest and open and just speak up so i would just say just embrace uh, communication and honesty. Do you still find the old double glazing car salesmen people out there trying to sell? Yeah, they're everywhere. They are everywhere. It's quite shocking. I was actually um, on a, on a call uh, to a friend the other day, and she had one. She was on FaceTime to me, and she had one come to her door, and she literally had to say to him like four times, "I'm busy." Um, so yeah, there they are uh, many of them out there. It's, it's quite surprising. What are the, some of the telltale signs that you've got demotivated staff? That's the right word, isn't it? Demotivated staff that might need that sort of guidance mm. from you. <coughs> yeah, love it. Um, so it's victimhood mentality. So basically, the kind of things that the telltale signs are: they blame. They blame the company, they blame circumstances, they rationalize, they make excuses, they, you know, just whatever it is, it's just not me. (laughs) But the beautiful part is when you teach them this, they realize they're actually shooting themselves in the foot and hurting their own pockets with victimhood mentality. Hi Susie. Mm. The... um what you were just talking about then, we think that mostly being sort of white collar workers, but could you do that for other sectors of the industry as well? Absolutely, because the common thing is, it's, it is a human thing. It, the commonality is anybody who's a human being really, um, to a certain degree, we all have this, this victimhood mentality. So um, definitely not just um, white collar. Susie, very, very interesting. Do you have uh, an idea of, of your ideal referral partners, the people who would pass you business? Mm. Are there, uh, like you mentioned like HR or recruitment, etc. Are there any ideal referral partners you could be working with? 
Well, you've just said the two. The two main ones are HR um, and recruitment um, because part of what um, I do is uh, psychometric assessments. Um, so uh, in terms of employing people, uh, salespeople in particular, there's a psychometric assessment that can be taken which assesses the eight core competencies of a salesperson that generates an interview uh, specific question, uh, you know, question, interview questionnaire. Um, so definitely recruitment prior to uh, actually placing somebody um, and then also HR very much so. Right, thank you very much. It's been great, it's really thank interesting. You, uh, let's have a round of applause again for Susie, please. If you would like to visit one of our online or face to face hubs, visit newgen networking.com and book a place. Get social at Network New Gen on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn.